Hello everyone, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to import parts with complex geometry into Abacus. So just to start, as you are maybe familiar, in practice sometimes you need to analyze create a model of a complex part, a part with a complex geometry or maybe an assembly of parts, each of which has a complex geometry or even the assembly itself is complex, that it becomes unpractical or even very hard or sometimes not possible even to create such geometry or assembly in Abacus CE. And the problem here is that Although when you are creating parts, you have this is the sketch module that you get. Although this sketch module is very capable, you can do many operations like drawing operations like uh, fillets, curves, uh, ellipses, uh, mirroring things, doing offsets, trimming and extending lines. So many things you can do uh, over here. But uh, again, it's not very easy to do that once you start to create 3D parts with complex geometry like the ones we see here that has lots of curves and these curves are not only in the 2D space but like this propeller for instance you have curves that are in the 3D so such curves are very hard to create in Abacus CEE to that end we cannot do this over here so we'll need to create these complex geometry in a different software and then import them into abacus in practice perhaps you are familiar with one of or maybe more of the software or maybe any other uh, software cad uh, 3d cad software so solidworks uh, katia you have uh, autocad uh, 3d you have fusion 360 so any of those CAD uh, or 3D CAD uh, software, you can go to the software and then you can create your complex part geometry. They have more capabilities and it's much easier to do that over there. Uh, whether it's a part or even an assembly of parts that's complex, like some of you who are doing mechanical engineering, like when you have this assembly of gears or if you are modeling a car with the motor and the wheels and everything of course it's much easier to do this in one of these software and then import them into abacus so the import process that we are going to discuss in this tutorial we are going pretty much from this software you can create a step file a step file is pretty much a widely used data exchange file for 3d objects uh, in CAD uh, programs so any CAD software that you are using you will find the capability to export your model as an STP file and then from Abacus then we can import this STP file into Abacus so actually before I go into Abacus and show you some examples so in Abacus if you go to file if you go to import Abacus allow you to import multiple things actually so you can import a sketch again if you have a very complex a sketch that has a complex geometry you can create this sketch into uh, AutoCAD for instance and then import it in Abacus and then you maybe extrude this sketch you can import part which what we're going to demonstrate in this tutorial so we are going to import part and Abacus allow you to import multitude of files, extension file types for the part, uh, for different software. But we are going to demonstrate in this tutorial, that, as we mentioned, the step file, because this is the most common type of file uh, that uh, you can create with any software. So this is the one that we are going to cover over here. In the same time, you can import an assembly. So again, from any of those CAD software, you can do an assembly and then import the entire assembly as an individual part and as an assembly as well into Abacus. So now let's go into Abacus and let's see how we can do that with actual examples. So right now here we are in Abacus and the first thing that I'm going to do, this is a, a blank uh, model over here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to import, as we mentioned, the step file. 
I already have a couple of step files on my PC for uh, two different examples, and I'm going to use those for demonstration. So if I go to file and I go to import, and then if I select part over here, so you get this dialog. So you need to browse for the location of the file. I already have the two files located uh, in the folder in the working directory that I'm creating this model from. And again, you have here the entire list of different file extensions that you can import into Abacus. I'm selecting here the step file. So that's why once I select the step file, I'm already seeing over here the two files that I already have. So I have two files, uh, .step or .stp, the same thing. These are all step file extensions. So the first file is for uh, this lounge chair and the second file is for the propeller with the uh, three blades. So let's start with the lounge chair. So I will double click on that. So now you get this dialog for to define the importing parameters. So first you need to specify the name of the file. So automatically it's taking the name of the file itself. So this is by default. You can change the name if you want. In the same time, the part filter. So here you are importing all parts, create individual parts or combine into single part. What does this mean? Well, when you are creating these geometries like this lounge chair that we showed in the slides in a CAD software, Typically, this part is created from smaller features in the software itself. And the problem is if I import it like this with individual parts, the chair will be imported into Abacus as a number of parts. Meaning that if I import this chair like that, this chair file, it's very possible, well, depending on the software and depending on how the part was created in the CAD software, it might be imported as uh, like this edge of the chair, like as a separate part, or each one of these uh, cross uh, bars of the chair as a separate parts, which of course is not convenient. So instead, in this case, I'm going to, uh, well, this might be actually what you want, but in our case here, I'm going to say combine into a single part. So the entire lounge chair will be imported as a single part. And in the same time, I'm going to say merge solid regions, but in the same time, return intersecting boundaries. So what does this mean? It means that this thing is going to be imported as a single part. And in the same time, the partitions or the boundaries between all these intersections between the different sub parts will remain in place. And that's very useful because later on, once we import this into Abacus, we don't need to start creating uh, partitions in the solid part to make the mesh uh, easier later on. So we'll not need to do that if we select this option. So again, I'm going to say retain intersecting boundaries. Again, you might end up with a situation that you want to do something different. Uh, in the same time, again, if this is uh, made of multiple features or like subparts, you might want to import a specific part number from the file. You have other part attributes. So the modeling space, well, it depends on this part, if it's a 2D part or 3D part and so on. But the common one that we are going to do here, it's a 3D deformable part. For the scale, well, in the CAD software, you might have drawn this part in, let's say in meters and you want to import it here by millimeter. So maybe you want to scale your part by some uh, number. Uh, in my case, the part is in millimeter and I want to create my model in millimeter, so I will not do any scaling. And then I just need to click on OK. And if you do so, that's it. So I have my part over here. Maybe the orientation is a little bit different depending on how you created this. So you can see here, you have all the partitions, you have all the boundaries between the different bars and between the different elements. So everything looks fine. If you want to make sure that everything is fine, so but you just go, you can go right ahead to the meshing and then you can mesh your part. So here you have some uh, locations, of course, that need some work because you cannot mesh it with the default mesh shape. So perhaps you just need to go to the mesh control, like something complex like this. You can perhaps do it as 
with uh, tetrahedral elements uh, with a free technique algorithm which can pretty much mesh any geometric shapes especially complex one and then if i can mesh it again and then there is no problem and then the entire thing is meshed all right that's it uh, by the way uh, you can uh, continue by creating whatever you want loading steps and the entire model uh, notice here that this part that we imported it's a solid part right so everything inside is solid so everything is solid so these two edges of the chair like the wooden edges these are all solid bars and in the same thing like these cylindrical crossbars are all solid all right the same thing for those and those okay so everything here is solid so let's uh, see another example let's import another file for the propeller so i'll go again and i will say import and i'm going to import a part the same thing and i'm going to import this propeller with three blades so i'm going to do that again i have the same interface i'm going to use the same options for the skill that's fine i'll keep everything as it is and then i'm going to say okay so now i'm importing this and uh, here i'm getting uh, this warning message it's not an error message it's just a warning message saying that the part contains some imprecise geometry so when this part was created perhaps there was like some gaps some uh, uh, issues with the edges that are not closing in the same location uh, maybe uh, some points that are not uh, overlapping or something like that because of all these curves so abacus is telling me here like uh, a tip saying that partitioning uh, or uh, or using a hex meshing uh, may fail with this kind of a uh, part but that's fine we can just dismiss that this is just a warning uh, if you have any of these problems you can always go here to geometry edit and if you click on that you can actually repair like if you have small edges or something like that if you want uh, to stitch any edges that are not overlapping and then you can specify a tolerance so you can pretty much fix any problem that you have in your imported part of course it's always good that you or make sure that your part is well drawn in the CAD software before you import it into Abacus so I will keep everything as it is, that's fine. These warnings are not problematic for this, for my case, but I would like to note something. So in this case, what I imported, it's a solid part. So my 3D propeller is a solid part. So inside each one of these blades, they are solid from the inside, which might not be the case. We might, in this case, for instance, I might want this wing or this blade to have a hollow interior. So what you can do, you can actually remove any one of the external faces of the part. And if you do that, then the entire thing will be hollow from the inside. It will be transformed into a shell. So how you can do that, if you go here to remove faces, if I click on remove faces, and if I click, uh, if I remove one of these faces, let's say for instance, this face over here, right or let me do the one from the back of the propeller like if i remove this face and i click done so here it says that the power had cells and continuing with this operation will affect that that's fine so the cells meaning that the part has cells we know that the cells are a feature for solids so now abacus is warning me that if you remove this face all the cells connected to this face will be removed which is what I want because I want actually to have the entire thing as a shell. So if I click yes, so now you see, so from the inside, now everything is hollow. So everything now is hollow. So this is what I want. And then you can, of course, do uh, the cut, view cut over here, the cut manager to cut anywhere in your propeller. And then you will see that as we mentioned, everything is a shell. So that's it. Uh, this seems that the part is correct. Again, if you want to make sure that there are no other problems, you go to the meshing. We can try meshing the part. Of course, this is a shell, so shell elements will be used. 
So in that case, of course, you can make the meshing much better by doing additional partitioning in Abacus. But as you see, everything is done uh, correctly and the meshing, uh, no errors happening in the meshing. This means that there are no problems with the geometry. And then you can continue with by the rest of your model, the steps and the loading and the boundary conditions and so on. So that's it. This concludes our tutorial on how to import complex geometry. Very useful, uh, especially if you are doing something like that. There are additional options, of course, to so importing assemblies that we are going to cover in future tutorials. Thank you.